Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta, I'm a cardiologist in York and uh, tonight I was keen to do a video and um, I put it out to you guys as to what you wanted to hear about and uh, particularly Julie. Julie um, wanted to, to know a little bit about the vagus nerve and how the vagus nerve uh, can affect the heart and um, how it can be responsible for ectopic beats. So uh, this is quite a complex subject and I wanted to do it in a simplistic way so I had to do a little bit of research um, so bear with me because uh, <laughs> it's quite tough to explain, all right? So the first thing to realize is that if you take the heart out of the body, okay, it will keep beating, okay? Now, it beats according to a rate that is set in the in a part of the heart called the pacemaker, the sinoatrial node or the pacemaker. And the pacemaker is just programmed to beat at a certain rate, all right? So the pacemaker, you can think of the pacemaker as a, as a, as a drummer, okay? And he's meant to fire at a certain rate, all right? And so if you take the heart out of the body completely on its own, you know, there's no connection to the heart, the heart will continue to beat for a little while, all right? And the rate of the heart is decided by the pacemaker. The, the pacemaker sits there, he fires, he, or he hits a drum, the heart beats, then he waits, he hits a drum, and he, the heart beats, all right? Now, it is also important to know that he is not the only drummer in the heart, but his drum stops all the other drummers from beating i.e. there are other areas in the atrium or in the ventricles that can also fire, all right? But because the pacemaker is firing at a certain rate, it is overriding any other areas from firing, all right? So, but if you slow the pacemaker down excessively, then other areas may choose to fire instead, all right? So it works because it is firing at a certain rate and because that rate is higher than um, a certain level, it suppresses other bits of the heart from firing. Now, so that's what happens to the heart when it is out of the body. However, when the heart is in the body, the body needs some kind of mechanism to control the heart rate. You can't just rely on the heart beating at a certain rate all the time because there are times when you need the heart to beat faster. There are times when you need the heart to settle down after it's beating for, after it's been beating faster, and therefore you have innovation of the heart by something called the autonomic nervous system. All right, and so the autonomic nervous system consists of two parts. There's the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. The role of the sympathetic nervous system is to increase the heart rate, all right? So uh, that is done by secreting uh, adrenaline and noradrenaline around where the heart is. And that, that adrenaline that is released by the sympathetic nervous system speeds the heart up. Um, it will also make the heart more irritable. If the heart has an irritability about it, speeding the heart by the sympathetic nervous system will increase the irritability. And that is why what happens when you get anxious or when you are, for example, watching a scary movie uh, or you know someone jumps out at you, what happens is that your sympathetic nervous system starts acting very, starts, um, uh, is, is activated, uh, you release adrenaline, and that adrenaline acts on your heart and increases your heart rate. So the first thing to say is the sympathetic overactivity, okay, like the flight or fright response, will increase your heart rate. In general, when you so it is often the case that people will get palpitations when sim, the sympathetic activity is increased. All right. Um, so the palpitations can just be a fast heart rate that you notice a lot more. Or it can also be more in the way of ectopics 
or sometimes heart rhythm disturbances like you know um, SVTs etc atrial fibrillation can also happen as a result of a sympathetic overactivity excessive sympathetic overactivity um, the one of the hallmarks of sympathetic overactivity is the fact that generally if the heart is just going faster i.e. you are developing a sinus tachycardia the heart rate tends to go up gradually and come down gradually if it's a dysrhythmia or a heart rhythm disturbance the heart rate goes bang up stays at a certain level and then bang like a light switch it comes off all right uh, that's sympathetic um, activity now anything that activates the sympathetic nervous system uh, will increase your heart rate but on the other side you have the parasympathetic system which has the which has the effect of lowering the heart rate so it does everything uh, in um, opposition to the sympathetic nervous system and the vagus nerve is a nerve which um, <clears throat> essentially provides a connection between the brain the heart the lungs and the gastrointestinal tract and basically this releases something called acetylcholine and the effect of the vagus nerve is to slow the heart down and it is quite important for the vagus nerve to act because if you for example uh, have sympathetic overactivity what brings your heart down back to normal so say someone scares you you don't want your heart to just continue beating at 100 beats per minute what tends to happen is that the sympathetic activity starts dying down and the parasympathetic activity goes up and that brings your heart back down now in some people so the vagus nerve is responsible for parasympathetic activity i.e slowing the heart down all right now in some people for example athletes um, what can happen is because they're training themselves to such a level their constant their, their parasympathetic nervous system is very active okay uh, and it tends to predominate and their heart rate tends to go very low now the problem with that is that if you're pushing the heart rate very low then you're basically asking that drummer in your pacemaker to slow down excessively which means that there are other areas in the heart in the atria that can then start firing so it is quite possible that vagal stimulation or excessive vagal activity will increase your propensity to developing ectopics or pacs premature atrial complexes because you've basically slowed the pacemaker down the only reason you're not getting them you're not getting pacs is because the pacemaker is beating at a certain rate but if you slow the pacemaker down then other areas around the atria can then start firing and they come through and th that can then cause pacs and pvcs uh, pacs mainly and um that's why a lot of athletes often develop things like atrial fibrillation uh, or, uh, or paroxysmal atrial fibrillation because their vagal tone is so high their heart rate goes below that level um, where it can uh, override any other um, uh, areas which could release complex uh, re release impulses now one of the very relevant things about this is that generally um, if you have heart disease or if you have a structurally abnormal heart it's more likely that you're going to get sympathetic mediated PVCs, PACs, etc. And if you have a structurally completely normal heart, it is more likely that you're going to get parasympathetically mediated PACs, i.e., your overactive parasympathetic nervous system pushes the heart rate below its baseline at certain times and can do it. One of the interesting um, uh, um, um applications of this is in, is with gastroesophageal uh, disease or gastric distension so what happens in there this is called the rome held um syndrome r-o-e-m-h-e-l-d rome held syndrome and basically what happens is that the stomach gets distended the vagus nerve which is going which is um traversing around the stomach can get compressed and by um, compressing it you can actually cause um, uh, parasympathetic activation and then that can actually push the heart down even lower and that can then cause PACs 
to develop. And that's why some people find that after eating, they can get this. And the answer to that then is to try, try to avoid eating big meals and try avoiding carbonated drinks because they can really stretch the stomach. And so if you have small meals, then that is less likely to cause PACs and PVCs after food. Uh, another thing to be aware of is that the vagus actually, you can actually press on the vagus here, vagal stimulation. So if you compress here and you rub it, that is activating your vas vagus nerve. And um, uh, we often use that in people who have, say, supraventricular tachycardias, where we think that the SVT has been caused by an overactivity of the sympathetic nervous system. So by compressing there, you can slow the heart down. So pressing over here has the ability to slow the heart down um, um, and abort ectopics or abort uh, dysrhythmias caused by an overactivity of the parasympathetic nervous system. Um, so that's about it, really. I think um, it's just aware it's just good to be aware of the vagus nerve it's worth knowing that it traverses here so basically what you do is you feel for this adam's apple here and then just slide your hand down there and press on that i wouldn't recommend you do it um uh, you know to yourself and certainly you shouldn't do it on both sides because you'll end up constricting the blood supply to your neck but it's just worth knowing that it's over there and sometimes just by pressing there you can actually um uh, get rid of svts these are called vagal maneuvers. Other vagal maneuvers can be things like um, rubbing your eyeballs or, or putting your head in cold water. And for some people, if you have sympathetic overdrive causing your arrhythmia or dysrhythmia, then vagal maneuvers can help. If on the other hand, you have a predominantly parasympathetic um, reason for your topics, i.e. your heart is excessively slow, then a vagal maneuvers can actually make it a bit worse. All right. Uh, so I hope this was useful. Um, I'm really glad to, um, uh, to be sharing this with you. Uh, Julie, I hope you're happy with this. Um, please feel free to uh, share these videos. It means a lot to me if you share them. It, um, my, you know, it increases the visibility of this channel and it may help other people. Uh, because I know a lot of you have said that um, you found uh, some of these videos quite helpful. And I really appreciate that, and I mean it. And I will continue to put out some videos for you um, uh, in due course. If you need to contact me, you can do so on my Facebook page, um, uh, my Twitter page, uh, or even better, on my website, yourcardiology.co.uk. Um, and um, that's about it. Um, uh, thank you so much for listening, and uh, I wish you a good night.